Hello, in this video we are going to take a look at three more AP Calculus Multiple Choice questions. All of these are going to have to do about piecewise functions. And when you see piecewise functions on the AP test, typically they are testing your knowledge of continuity or differentiability. And if you can apply those definitions well. So in this one, they have a piecewise function and it says if f is continuous at x equals 3, what is the value of k? Now really, all this problem is going to boil down to is going x squared plus 2 must equal 6x plus k when x is equal to 3. But why is it like that? I want to take the time to talk about the three points of continuity here because it's important to know these three points as you do the AP test because they will test you on them in various ways throughout the test. So the first thing with the continuity, you need all three of these things to be continuous at a point. First of all, the limit as x approaches a of the function must exist. So this is in order to be continuous at that point A. Next, you need F of A to be defined. Okay, That is on a graph, it can't just be an open dot, it has to be a closed in thing. And then the point, the third point, I like to think of as putting those two together. You need the limit as X approaches A of the function to be equal to F of A. So in eyes of that first point, I need that limit to exist. For a limit to exist, it needs to equal the same thing from both sides. That means I need the limit as x approaches 3 of x squared plus 2 to equal the limit as x approaches 3 of 6x plus k. For the x squared plus 2 function, I'm actually looking at the limit as x approaches 3 from the left because it only applies for values less than 3. For the right function it's from the right because it only applies for values greater than 3. So in order for this limit to exist these two limits need to equal the same thing. Well we know that when we evaluate limits we can just direct substitute if that works. So I plug in 3 and I get 9 plus 2 is equal to. Now I plug in 3 from this one we get 18 plus k. Ah, and I can just solve this for k. So 11 equals 18 plus k. k is equal to negative 7. Okay, so we get the answer of a. Now, when I did that explanation, I took a long time with it. However, this is a problem that you should speed right through. Because you should see, oh, to be continuous at x equals 3, visually, what I need is the curve to have the same y value. Okay, so you want those two to hit at the same y value. Because if I come in with a curve on the left, like so, but then I come in from the right with a curve right here, clearly they're not continuous because I have that jump between them. I want them to intersect to hit at the same y value. And to do that, you just set them equal to each other. So in these piecewise functions, if you're trying to make them continuous, just set the functions equal to each other. Okay, we have another piecewise function here. This time it's asking if f is the function defined above, then f prime of negative 1 is... If I want to find f prime of negative 1, basically I can take where it's defined at negative 1 and find the derivative. That's what you would think to do for sure. However, there is something else hiding behind the scenes in this question. They're wanting you to pay very, very close attention to this one. Um, on the one hand, f prime of negative 1, I can clearly see is uh, negative 2 times negative 1, which is equal to 2. So you're like, oh, okay, so the derivative is 2. Hmm, not so fast. In order to be differentiable, what do you also need? You need continuity. Differentiability implies continuity. You can only take a derivative if the function itself is continuous. How do I know if this function is continuous? I need to see if 2x plus 5 
equals negative x squared plus 6 at x equals negative 1, similar to the last question. So I plug it in. That negative is on the outside, so it's negative 1 squared first. So I have negative 2 plus 5, and then I have negative 1 plus 6, which gives 3 equal to 5. Ah, not so fast there. So here, the function is not continuous, which means it does not have a derivative at negative 1. Therefore, in fact, this correct answer is E, non-existent. Okay, we have one last question here involving piecewise, and this is a which of the following statements are true type of question. So we'll go through this one by one, and we'll see which ones are true. First of all, it says f is not continuous at x equals 4. Okay, well, at x equals 4, it appears to be defined at 8, but that is only at x equals 4, which means otherwise this function applies for on the other two sides of 4. So I need to know, does the limit as x approaches 4 of our function exist? And then on top of that, I need it to equal 8. All right, so direct substitution isn't going to work because that will cause it a 0 in the denominator. So we will try and factor and cancel this guy. The top, after I find factors of negative 32 that add to positive 4, gives me x plus 8, x minus 4. And then factors of negative 8 that add to negative 2 gives me x minus 4, x plus 2. With that, the x minus 4s cancel, meaning I'm left with the limit as x approaches 4 of x plus 8 over x plus 2. I got rid of my 4 so I can direct substitute. I have 12 over 6, which is equal to 2. Uh-oh. That means the limit as x approaches 4 equals 2. However, it is defined to be 8, so there is a little hole in the graph there. It is not continuous, which actually means number 1 is true. Okay, point 2. The limit as x approaches infinity of f of x is equal to 4. When I am finding limits as x approaches infinity, that breaks down to a what is the horizontal asymptote type of question. And when you have a function that is a rational equation of polynomial divided by polynomial, it's really easy to find the horizontal asymptotes. Remember, if the degree of the top is bigger than the degree on the bottom, there are no asymptotes. If the degree is equal to the degree on the bottom, it's the ratio of the lead coefficients. And if the degree on the bottom is bigger, well, then y equals 0 is always the horizontal asymptote. So in this case, the degrees are the same, it's both 2 and 2. Therefore, I compare the lead coefficients, which is 1 and 1. That means I have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1, which in turn means the limit as x approaches infinity is 1, not 4. So this is not true. Okay, so again, if you're looking at a limit as x approaches infinity or negative infinity, that's a horizontal asymptote question. You are looking for horizontal asymptotes. x equals 4 is a vertical asymptote of the graph y equals 4x. This is hardly a calculus question. This is just remembering that vertical asymptotes are setting your denominator equal to 0 after you have canceled any factors that can be canceled. So since in the original here I already canceled out x minus 4, I'm left with only x plus 2 and I get x equals negative 2, that's the only vertical asymptote here, which means x equals 4 is not a vertical asymptote, meaning 1 is the only true statement, meaning b is the correct answer to this question.